Hey everyone, on today's episode of Aussie Garage, we're here with Gary. We're talking to him about his Plymouth Fury 3. This thing is absolutely awesome. A quick squirt. And also guys, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. It really helps us out if you comment and uh, put a like on our videos. It makes a massive difference to our channel. So please support us in any way you can. And don't forget we've got our merch at aussiegaragetv.com.au and you can get t-shirts there, hats and all that kind of stuff. So please support our channel in any way you can. We really do appreciate it. Thanks a lot. G'day everyone, Dan here. Uh, today I'm here with Gary and we're here to talk to him about his Plymouth Fury 3, which is an amazing looking car. So um, Gary, man, how long have you had this thing? How, how, what can you tell us about it? Um, oh, I actually purchased it in, Jesus, now I reckon the brain, March 2, 2012. Okay. I've had it 11 years, I think. Yeah, 11, just over 11 years. I first saw it in 2004 at Big Owls when he used to have his... The poker um, run, yeah? Yeah, the poker run. And I just fell in love with it because I was chasing a Charger or a Challenger. That's what I wanted. But there were just, there was too many of them coming in. And yeah. I didn't want, I've never been one to have a, a popular car. I wanted something that was, you know, different. So I saw it and then um, I lost it. I couldn't find it anymore. Didn't have a phone on it. Waited for the guy. And then I bumped into it again uh, two years later at the National Hot Rod Show that was in Bustleton. Okay. And it was there again. And I finally got hold of the owner and said to him, look, you know, what do you want to sell this for? Blah, 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 blah. And he gave me a price and I thought it was a bit high. So I chased him for about two years. I had a 300C um, SRT8 okay. that was worked up. And I said, what about we do that and a little bit of a cashier on the side? And he, he said, no, I really want to, you know, I want to sell it now. So I chased him for about another three years, got the price down to where I wanted it and got it. Yep. Nice. Um, so perseverance paid off in the end for that one. Yeah, it did. It yeah, did. So how, how did long was that all up? About seven years or so of chasing? It was actually, yeah. <laughs> it was. It was eight years. You see it on TV and you think, yeah, sure. You know, that's not, mm. That doesn't happen. But it actually did. The more, the more I thought about it, the more I wanted it because there were so many charges and challenges coming in. And uh, I thought, no, I, I want that car. It's so different. You just wanted the unique ride. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah the one that's, that's different. I mean, it's the only one in Australasia. Yeah. Apparently there was one in or they thought there might be one in Victoria that the guy used to put his own bales in yeah, okay. on a farm, but there's no truth in that apparently. So yeah. as far as I know, it's, it's, it's a rare car. Only 1,952 of them ever made. So, yeah. so you're saying that you thought there was only one other one in Australia yeah. that you may know of? So yeah, you, some you, guys said. not 100% said, on that though? No, well, uh, apparently some guy said that it was a, a Dodge Phoenix, okay. which is the Aussie version of this. Dodge Phoenix is exactly the same body, etc as a Fury, but a lot of other differences, but pretty much the same car. And apparently it was a Dodge Fury convertible, which are rare. Okay. So yeah, so I chased it all that time and, and, uh, and finally got it. Yep, nice. So have you kept this thing mostly originally? Is it mostly in its original trim or? Um, yes, yes and no. Um, obviously the, the- uh, Yeah, and that's the, the, the police spotty, light. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the spotties and the, and the actual bonnet. I, the guy that built, built the motor up had one of those in his cabinet and had that in his cabinet and it was pretty grotty looking so I thought I really like that and uh, if anybody out there knows what that comes off tell me okay. because I do not know and I have not been able to find out yeah um, I polished it up and I put that on but other than that yeah it's pretty stock apart from obviously the the wheels tires yeah well everyone changes their wheels and tires. absolutely yeah, yeah, yeah but inside it's pretty much apart from the extras like the rev counters and the the clocks yep. and, and things like that um, I don't really want to get away too much from the originality of it. Yeah, cool. So as far as the history goes before you owned it, do you know anything about it, like when it was imported to Australia and that sort of thing? Yeah, he bought, a, he bought it over about three years prior to that. He bought two back, the guy, okay. the previous owner, he bought two back. This one went, this one he took, he bought two of them on one side, and this one he took across Route 66 and back again. So when I got it, it was, it was fairly tight, so yeah, know, okay. we, had, we had to do some work, but... Um, I've heard strong rumours that it was an ex-police car in Canada, um, but I'm not quite sure of that. I'm, I'm trying to get the provenance on it, but yeah. I, I probably wouldn't take much credence in it. But it'd probably uh, be very difficult seems... to get that kind of information. Yeah, you know, it is. These it days, is. And would it, you know, it is. It is because um, Furies aren't one of the um, 
critique cars of, of Mopar, you know, like the Challenger yeah. and the Charger, where they've got plenty of histories for them. Um, the Furies, they didn't have so much of, up to about 66, I think. They had, they got, you can get the information on, but these, it's, it's just trying to glean bits of info. Right, so what's the drivetrain in this one? Uh, it's still got, it's still got the same block. This is a numbers matching car, and I didn't want to, I didn't want to change that. I, I, I was, uh, I had an opportunity to get a 440 that was a real sweet, sweet little uh, motor, but I thought, nah, I want to, I want to keep it because it's numbers matching. So we, we just took the top off and, and completely stroked it. Yep. Got alley heads, H beam um, rods. I think they were Avanti, uh, Avanti Voodoo's, okay. the original ones. The guy that did my work. Um, was Lionheart Motors in Midland, uh, Richard, and he's a nut on Mopars. Yep. He's also very fastidious, so he did all his work on the computer. It took him, I think, three months to get all the various pieces that could, could match up, okay. roller bearings, beehive, springs, that sort of thing, um, and we, we put it all together. So it, uh, at the moment, um, it, it puts about 520, I think, at the 520, 525 at, at, at 6,000 revs, so that's not the highest rev. Nice. Well, that, um, that's certainly not so Horsepower, yeah. No, yeah, at the block, and about 384 up to the rears. Yeah, cool. So, I mean, it's not the fastest thing because it weighs a couple of tons. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it can, it can certainly look after itself. No worries. And what, what's the gearbox and the diff? It's just, the same. Just the same? I've kept, yeah. the, I've kept that. All, all the factory all, stock. All yeah. stock, yeah. That's all pretty much stock. Yeah, so Underneath, the 426 was the original size of the motor, was it? It was a 383. Okay. So I found those badges, so I just stuck them on there because okay. one of the 383s had fallen off. Yeah, right, yeah. And yeah. that was near enough to where it's sitting right and now. It's it's between 420 and, and 440. We can't okay. exactly, exactly know yeah, where it course, is. Yeah. So that, that's about where it is. Um, up to about two years ago, I was running a, a big holly. Then I went over to Edelbrook because I was having problems with the fuel. Yeah. And now it's got an EFI holly sprint yep. um, EFI in it. So yeah, nice. And that's made humongous difference. Yeah, okay. Humongous. Just responsive. Yes, yep. much more responsive. I don't have to sit it here for about half an hour warming up. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> we talked about fuel economy before. Did it better the fuel economy? Yeah. Well, actually, it did. It did. Yeah. I'll be honest with you, it did. Yeah, yes. Cool. Um, but it's still it's still a thirsty girl. Yeah. There's okay. no two ways about that. Yeah. You know. Well, but, big big car, big motor, uh, a lot of yeah. weight to get around. So yeah. It's it got a big tank, thank God. But I could, I could probably use just under a tank getting down to um, to Dunsborough. Yeah. At cruising at cruising speeds with an odd. Out here and there, but you can't yeah, do it. You've yeah. got to be so careful. No, no. Underneath's all been stripped out and redone, pretty much to what it was originally. But all the yeah. bushes obviously were. Yeah, cool. I mean, this car's over 50 years old now, so. Uh, and uh, we've got a three-inch exhaust running all the way through from from headers. Nice, and that yeah equals that nice crackle when. when yeah, you start when it up starts up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah it's uh, yeah, beautiful. I was at I was out of the show and uh, the Northern Steel show. And I started, I didn't, I wasn't even thinking that there was a family standing at the back. And because okay. the pipes come out the sides, there was a kid standing with his, with his family. And I started it up, he got such a fright, the ice cream shot out of its car. Oh. <laughs> Plop, and he started crying. Yeah. And I, I, I apologised, I said, no, don't worry about it. But uh, yeah, yeah, it was a rather funny thing yeah. to <laughs> no. Cool. All right, well, let's have a bit of a closer look at some of the details. All right, so the thing that really strikes me with this car is, Literally the size of it. Yeah. It is huge. Do you, have, do you actually know how long it is? It's uh, about 18 and a half feet. Wow. Just just a fraction under 19, I think. So it's about uh, an inch shorter than a caddy. Yeah, okay. So you're one of these guys that parks way up the back of the car park and takes a couple of spaces? Uh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> nice. I think you'll find most guys with classic cars take up double spaces now because these doors, yep. um, these doors are huge. Yeah. You know, if you open that door, it would... It wouldn't even get halfway open in the yeah. normal car park. So, were these part of the original uh, factory thing, or you put those on? Yeah, yeah. No I'm more. a nut. I, I love twin aerials. Yeah, yeah. On no, the they 60s look, they and look 70s, fantastic. Uh, yeah, 60s they really and 70s yeah, yeah. cars. I got that from um, Valley Grunt. Yeah. In South uh, South Australia, I used to have a VE uh, Valiant that had been 60s uh, matte black. You know, yeah. the whole uh, 60s look with um, Venetian blinds. And I got a set for that. And he said, I've got a spare set here, I'll chuck them in. So on my leg. No worries. No, that's awesome. So the bumpers are another thing on real styling point of these, aren't they? You know what I mean? Like they've you've got the full wraparound bumper bar at the yeah. front and it's I'm looking at the back now and it's pretty much the same setup, isn't it? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I love how they're really tucked in 
to the body. Yeah, you don't normally get that. Yeah. Uh, you know, normally, if, as you see, you know, there are resto mobs and they've got to pull them in, but these yeah. are, are already there. I mean, it, it's obviously uh, a sign of a Chrysler, Chrysler built car by the big wraparound bumpers. Yeah, yeah. You know, the GXTs of the 70s had them wrap around as well. Well, I think in Australia, all we got was the Chrysler by Chrysler, wasn't it, with that big wraparound bumper? It right? was, that's yeah. How you, that's how you could pick those. I remember a friend of mine had one back in Canberra. Yep. Yeah, yeah, very similar. That was my first car in WA when yeah, it nice. came over, Chrysler yeah. Chrysler. Another massive... 318, Another yeah. massive tank of a car, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the police lot, obviously, we, we touched on that just quickly before, but is that the thing that's steering you towards this possibly being a, an ex-police No, car? I put them on. You put that on, did you? Yeah, yeah cool. they yeah. used to have them there. They, cause they couldn't have them on the uh, pillars. They normally have them on the pillars with a handle. Yep. And there was a hole there, so obviously they were there, or something was there, okay. and that led me to believe that maybe it was. Okay. Uh, I mean, look, it may be absolute crap, I don't know. No worries at all. All right, well, um, let's um, have a look at the inside. We might actually take it out, pull the top back and, yep. and check out the trim. It's, um, I feel like I'm in someone's lounge room. <laughs> it's it's uh, certainly a cruiser. Yeah, um, yeah. No, this is huge, isn't it? Yeah, it does. It does feel like. I mean, the seats are way back, yeah. and, you, and you think, how can you drive like that? But it's actually very, very comfortable. I find now, um, if I drive like my Jeep, you know, I'm sort of more bolt upright. Yeah. So it, this does give you that whole sense of of cruising. And, yeah. And you do find that you'd sort of got that gangster hand on you yeah, get, uh, <laughs> on the fat. steering wheel because it's just more comfortable I yeah, guess I and as a passenger know, but... we call we can get the fat arm and going on yeah, yeah. absolutely <laughs> yeah um, so I know it's all like you said all very original in here there's not a lot pretty of much uh, the radio is extra yeah um, and the dials underneath I managed to get hold of a analog clock which I always like because you can look down at yep um, temperature gauge I took off uh, what was in there was a temperature gauge the yep. moon, moon eyes temperature gauge but I took that out um, and the boys looked after me down at um, Armadale Auto. So then I got the rev counter, uh, which I needed yep. at the time, especially when I was taking it around Wanneroo Track. And also got one of those speed, you know, the digital oh, GPS, speed. GPS, GPS speed, yeah, they, yeah, I've got one of those in my but, van yeah, as well. Yeah, it keeps re readjusting or re whatever you call it every uh, th three seconds or something. Yeah. So I know exactly what speed I'm doing. So other than that, I took the steering, the old steering wheel off. I, I couldn't handle that. Yeah. But other than that, it's a bit and, hard to get your legs around and this some baby, of the old wheels, isn't it? Yeah, I put that in as well. Yep. But other, other than that, inside, yeah, I just needed something to, you know, everybody needs a coffee mug these days. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Yeah, that's it. Um, I might so, actually had it for drinks. Yep. I really like your little um, objects in the mirror are losing sticker you've got on your mirror. Yeah, there. yeah. Yeah, I saw that on a YouTube thing in America, and I thought, man, I want one of those. I couldn't find it, so. Um, I just got one of those label things yeah, and that, put it on there. No, that's yeah, awesome. I like that. It's caused a few giggles at, the, at some shows. Yeah, yeah, I'll bet. Yeah. yeah. No, look, I could definitely see West Coast Highway getting um, getting a run in this for sure. Yeah I, yeah, I don't take it out on the weekends much down the West Coast Highway because it's so bloody busy down yeah, there. Yeah, you know, Every time Dick and Harry goes down there yeah. now. So I normally take this up to Gingin. Okay. I like to take this up, you know, stop up there and then have lunch. All right, well, um, yeah, let's... Get out and pop the bonnet and see what makes this thing go. Alrighty. Alright, let's get this thing open before it blinds me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a testament to your paint job. Well, the paint job was already on it. Awesome, look at that. So, so you're saying this, this is a, a stroker motor? Yes, this has been stroked right out. It's got H beam um, rods. It, well, I think they were Avanti Voodoo, as I said before, but now yep. uh, I've had a bigger um, cam put in it. Yep. I think the cam was, uh, um, I can't remember the brand of the cam that's in. Um, and we went too high and it was lumpy. You know, it was sitting there and, and lumpy. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I don't, I'm Bobbing not into around. the lumpy thing. 
I want to go cruising, so I want it. So we got another another camp. It was just under the lump. Yep. Um, and got that sorted out. Um, and then I got EFI, as I said before, put in. And pretty much. Well, it looks carby, doesn't it? So this is the Holly. This, this is, is the Holly Sprinter the Holly system, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just yeah, just adjust it. I mean, the whole tank has to come out, and you have to put well, you know, all pumps and yeah, whatnot yep. in the tanks and all that. Run new lines, and then it's a completely different tune, but. But if you didn't know and you didn't take the air filter off, your average know. person would just look at that and go, Absolutely. cool, it's still a carby driven thing, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Yep, they would. So the extractors, I noticed they've got some mad bends on them. Are they just the normal extractors for these because of the way they have to go? Or has someone had to they make those up? They were made. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say there's some pretty crazy bends going on with those extractors. Yeah, so they look yeah. pretty. It's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a big motor, but they designed it odd because the extractors, well, the other exhaust went up. And so you've got to. You have a wee bit of difficulty getting to the plugs. Yeah, okay, right. You got to, the car's got to cool down, otherwise yeah. it's just tss, tss, all yep. the way through. So you said you changed the top end, did you change the heads as well? Oh yeah, when the aluminium, all that, so. these are alley heads. Alley heads, yep, yep. nice. It, everything from the block, because it was a numbers matching, I didn't want to change it, but everything from the block up was changed. Okay. Into alley, lights, you know, beehive, springs. Yep. Uh, we've got a double timing chain on it now that wasn't on it before. Yep. Um, and a lot of other mods. It, it, as I said, it took him a long time to do it, but it was worthwhile because he, he matched everything and double matched it to make sure that this thing would, you know, went right. All right, so gearbox-wise, torque flight? Yes, yes. 727 and, and the diff is straight. The, the, uh, the gearbox has been um, redone. Um, I, when I was racing this around Wanneroo, it, I came over the top and it, <laughs> yeah. for some reason, there was this funny noise. It just went woof. I look at the back and there's this huge power of smoke everywhere. I thought I'd blown it completely. Yeah. But I managed to get it home because it's, it's not far from here, Wanneroo. So yep. I managed to get it home and, and uh, took it down down to Wanneroo. And the guy told me, he said, look, this, this is, someone's been in here and re redone this before. Yeah, oh, that's, that's good to know. Yeah, yeah. It's just you had, a, you had apparently had some sort of collar around the wrong way. And because of the pressure I was putting on it, yep. hammering it, yeah, it, 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 out, uh, yeah. it had to pop it out. Yeah, so it wasn't anything too serious. Well, that, that was a good thing then. I mean, well, yeah, it was actually. Yeah, at least yeah. to find out that you've got a built box in it. It's not just a, a standard box waiting to um, yeah. waiting to die. <laughs> oh, I agree. I mean, yeah. at least I got three good rounds on it. You know, taking a big, a big old Leviathan like this around the, the track. Yeah, you yeah. Know, people tend to laugh at you, but she doesn't. There's not too much body roll in this. Yeah. But with the weight, the gearbox would really be working its butt off, really, wouldn't it? Like oh, to, it was. to pick it up, you know, this much weight and throw it around. Yeah, yeah. It, it, you've got to you've got to sort of nurse it, but still keep your foot down if you know yeah. what I mean. You know, you got to. Uh, it's just, it's a bit of an art, but. Yeah. Well, let's um, head around the back, and right. you know, I've always got to check out the boot space in this. You could probably have a small farm in there or something. Right. Well, you're definitely right that it's not as huge as you would think it is in here, is it? No. Well, All I right. mean, the normally uh, the norm a standard tire on these would slip down. In the in the in the well, okay. so it would be out of the way. Yeah, all right. So uh, you got you know I've got that big boom box there, and of course here, it doesn't go. It still goes back a fair way underneath. Yeah. But because the convertible, that's got to come down somewhere. It's got so to have, yeah, yeah. It's got to have somewhere to sit, doesn't it? But I mean, I've I've actually lay in it. Yep. When the tire was out, and that was there. Yeah. Um, when I first got it. Yeah, it's only like a four-body boot, though, isn't it? Yeah, usually the, some of these have like an eight-body boot. Yeah, yeah, it's a four-body boot. I've had yeah. four bodies in this. Yeah, <laughs> that's nice. Um, but yeah, mainly because of the the convertible roof that there's not that extra room at the back. Yeah. All right, so we've been around the whole car now, I think. So yeah. I think there's only one thing left to do. Let's go for a cruise. Absolutely, let's do it. Awesome. Before I had the uh, gearbox done, I, I only had two gears. Oh, okay. It just went from the from number two straight through to drive. When yeah. I had it done, I suddenly found I had three gears. Yeah, right. So that must have been yeah. the one that they played around with, I think. Yeah, that might have been the collar that was backwards, like you say. Yeah. On that gear. Good thing you didn't try and sell it to someone as a two-speed power glide or something. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it had three, but... I just thought, oh, maybe it's so low, I don't even know it's there. Yeah. Yeah, it's unfortunate, isn't it, when they feel that they've got to go against us rather than work with us, you know? And I, I, I'm pretty sure the mufflers are okay. You know, it sounds loud because the exhaust coming out the side, but the back. Yeah. No, it sounds sweet. And, you know, you 
really do feel like you're just cruising along in your lounge chair, mate. You, you know, do, like, don't you? Oh, <laughs> wicked. Yeah, you can. You know, it's one thing about the Australian cars, they weren't as big as these things, you know. Yeah. Like, so when you get in something this big, you just sort of start to go, oh yeah, that was, you know, that's what the Yank tank yeah. uh, came from. De you know? Definitely designed to go from state to state, you know, in a straight line. Yeah, yeah. They really were. Yeah. But, I mean, if I'm doing a, a hundred clicks, it only goes just over 2,000 revs. Yeah. It sits around 2,000 revs, so it's, you know, you can tell it's got such a big stroke on it. Yeah. That it really doesn't rev bugger all. It's not a high rev at, no, at, at any stage. Yeah, it certainly doesn't sound like a like a whip engine, you know, they no. formed a really revving engine, but it doesn't matter, it's a cruiser mate, what more do you want? Oh, that's right. I mean, I'm happy that it hasn't got a drone, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because most of them, when you put your exhausts on, have drones, so... Just along here further, there's a new uh, Mexican just gone up. Okay. I'll put it on Facebook, but I'll send it. I'll send it to you. It's um, Taco Bell. Yep. And there's a picture of the guy that owned the car before me with his mates in Arizona. Jesus. <laughs> Outside of Taco Bell. Yeah, just drive over the roundabout, lady. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a classic, wasn't it? So he's got a picture in 2008 of him and his mates outside of Taco Bell yep. in Arizona. So I went down, came down here, went before it opened up, and took a picture of mine outside of Taco Bell. Oh, beautiful. Didn't believe. Send it over to them? No, I didn't. Oh, yeah, the guy lives in here. Oh, okay, right. right yeah. yeah, he lives here. Yeah, he does. I think it's electric bikes or something now. Yeah. He still regrets selling this. Yeah. So, uh, I still regret selling that car. Well, one man's regret, I guess, is another man's. You never regretted buying it, I'm sure. Well, you know, I mean, I've quite honestly, I've gone to sell this three times. Okay. And every time I go to do the ad, I go, I can't do it. Yeah. I just, I just can't do it. I've got too much, too much time involved. Another American thing. We couldn't have asked for a better day to put the top down and go for a cruise, could you? This this spring and autumn are yeah. the two times that the convertible comes into its own. Yeah, absolutely. You yeah. know, otherwise you'd you'd, Too be, hot. you'd yeah. be feeling it in the heat. Yeah. Um, big thing for Mad Max. Yeah. He took it up the country. Went up with uh, Craig Clements to the boys. Here we are, my gentlemen. All right, Gary. Thanks heaps for talking to us about your car, mate. It's been absolute pleasure meeting you both. Yeah, no, it's been a pleasure to talk to you, man. Um, nice, nice weather to go for a cruise. Yeah, no, it, it was a perfect day in the end. Yeah, <laughs> and um, and what a beast of a car, what a tank, man. I absolutely Thanks, love man. it. So thank yeah. you, awesome, thank you very much. Thanks, guys. See you on the next one. Nicked it. You did. Oh, mate, uh, when when my mate was, a, he was a bit of a rascal. He, uh, I've got a spare. Well, I actually had a and the cries the spare steering wheel. Yeah. Then we'd drive along and he'd be driving with that and suddenly if someone was an idiot you'd go like that with a steering wheel <laughs> and they'd swerve out of the bloody way. Oh, it was so funny. Yeah. Or you'd pick it up and go, oh! Yeah. Shot. Just get back to get there. Are you able to get a decent shot or not? Yeah, I'm thinking that it's going to be here. Yeah, do that because we'll, we'll overlay and we're, we're only going to talk about this briefly. Yeah. We don't need to talk a lot about the trim because there's not a lot to talk about. Objects in the mirror are losing. <laughs> oh, it's so, cool. I saw it on the mirror car for a while, I'm not going to go.